Hey guys, welcome to Live More Tech. Um, so today I'm going to go through the process of developing a roll of film. Um, if you saw my last video, I kind of started with the, the computer side in. So once I had already had my film developed, I showed the software that I used, the scanner that I used, um, to get that uh, tangible analog image into the digital realm. So today I want to do sh to show uh, what I think is possibly the easiest way to, to develop a roll of film. So today I'm going to use a black and white roll of film, and I'm going to use what they call the stand development method. Um, so let's start. Okay, so stand development is, I think, possibly the easiest way to develop a black and roll, black and white roll of film. Um, it takes about an, it, it's, it takes longer. It takes about two hours, or at least the method I'm going to do is two hours. But you don't really have to worry about temperature that much, and you don't have to worry about uh, timing of your chemicals. And it's it's very straightforward. So today I'm going to use uh, Rodinol. This chemical has been around for eons. It's um, it's pretty well respected. It's been around for a long time and lasts a long time on your shelf. So you don't have to worry about your chemicals going bad. But the basic idea here with stand development is you use an extremely diluted um, amount of chemical. So normally chemicals are kind of 25 to 1 water, you know, water to chemical or 50 to 1 with the rodinol or even 10 to 1 some chemicals. But with this, with this process we're going to use 100 to 1 dilution. So the idea being you use a very, very minimal amount of chemicals and basically let it exhaust over a long period of time which develops your film. So with that 100 to 1 dilution, we pop it into our, our Patterson tank with, our, with the, the film inside there. Um, I'm going to give it a single agitation, let it sit for an hour, give it another agitation, let it sit for an hour, and you're done. Um, then you, if you finish, it, uh, finish off the process. So this is what I'm going to use today. Uh, first of all, obviously, I need a roll of film. So I've got a roll of black and white roll of film here. Um, to actually get from this roll into that tank, obviously, you need to be light safe. So I'm going to use a dark bag. So a dark bag is just a, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a bag of dark. <laughs> so you stick your arms in these, in this here. You put all the, 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 the roll of film and the tank and everything inside of here. You zip it up, and then you're working blind. It's not that difficult, but you use a uh, bottle opener, pop the lead off, pop the top off. You get the film roll out. And with the Patterson tanks, um, they're very, very easy to, to load film off. I've found, at least for the, for the 35 millimeter film. There's a couple of tabs um, on here that you can actually feel with your fingers when you're inside the bag. And once you slip that edge of film in, there's a couple of ball bearings here. Once you get past those ball bearings, you can kind of feel it catch. Now you actually just twist the tank, or tw sorry, twist the reel, and it re feeds the, the, uh, the film onto the reel. So it's pretty straightforward. Pop the reel into the tank. There's a center column in here. Slide that in. Get the top in. There's a little locking mechanism. You can feel it lock. Once that's clicked, now it's light safe. So at this point, you can actually get it out of the bag um, and do the rest of your rest of this stuff uh, in, in, the, in the daylight. Okay, so I got the roll of film in the tank. It's ready to go. Now I'm going to do a 100 to 1 solution or dilution of the rodinol and water. So I've got 500 milliliters of water here. Now I'm going to pour in 5 milliliters of the rodinol. We want to be really close, pretty close. Okay, so that's five milliliters. Um, now it's not that sensitive to temperature. Generally I just use tap water. If somewhere in the 65, 68 degrees is, is kind of ideal. So we pop the rodinol in there. Mix it around. I'll actually make sure we get all the chemicals out. Give it a little stir. That's it. Dump it in the tank. Okay. Now, I'm actually not even going to put the lid on. I'm just going to use the stirrer here and uh, give it a couple of agitations. And now I'm going to let it sit for one hour. Okay, so this has actually been sitting only for about 50 minutes. 
And uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning that um, one of the benefits of stand development is because of this real high dilution, it's pretty hard to mess it up. Um, so I've read uh, guys on the internet that, that do this anywhere from 30 minutes to, to two hours. Uh, the more, majority of them actually I see seem to be about around an hour. Um, the majority of, or, or most of the rod and all, or the developer in this, because of the high dilution, is exhausted uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes. So that last, any, any time over and above that, just eking out a little bit more, a little bit more, or a minute amount of developing time. So I'm going to give this uh, a little bit of an agitation here at 50 minutes uh, for a few seconds, and then uh, I maybe only give it about another 15 minutes, and we'll kind of see what we get from that. Uh, the last couple times I did this around the two-hour mark, but uh, let's, let's try it now at, uh, you know, maybe an hour 15, an hour 20 see what we get all right so we'll see you back then all right so it's been about an hour and 15 minutes and we're done we're gonna see what happens like i said the last couple of rolls i did this i did around uh, around the two hours but i've read guys do anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour to an hour and a half so we're about an hour and 15 minutes and it'd be kind of interesting to see uh see what comes out so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to go over the sink uh, i'm going to dump this out and I'm just going to give it a quick rinse under some running water. Again, room temperature water or whatever comes out of the faucet, 60 some odd degrees. I'm going to rinse it three or four times, you know, 30, 40 seconds. Just give it a couple of agitations and dump that out. And then I will come back here and we're going to do the, um, the fix. So what I'm using for a fixer is this uh, Photography's Formulary uh, TF4 Archival Fixer. So it uh, seems to be working pretty good stuff. I've got some pre-diluted here in this bottle. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna dump this out. We'll come back. We'll put the fixer in, and we'll go from there. Okay. So I dumped it out, rinsed it for a little bit. Now we're gonna pour in some of this fixer. Okay. So I'm gonna agitate this for a little while. Basically, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fix it for about three or four minutes. Kind of agitating it for about 5, 10, 15 seconds. Um, and then I'm going to stop, let it rest for 30 seconds, and so on. Again, I'm not, I'm really not that critical when it comes to this, but. So let me finish this up and we'll go from there. Okay, so I poured the, um, the fixer back into the, the bottle. The nice part about this stuff is you can reuse it quite a few times. And then I went and rinsed the film, uh, again, in just cold running water, for a few minutes. And there we go. There's our, there's our film. So you can kind of see. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take this out of the, the reel and we're going to hang it to dry. Okay. So there's the film. Uh, so I pulled it out of the reel and just hung it up on an old coat hanger. And uh, what actually I do do or will do here is I do hit it with a squeegee just to get some of the residual water off. It's kind of an idea. And that's about it. I'm going to let this dry for about an hour, hour and a half, whatever, until it's dry. And then uh, we'll cut it up and see what we get. All right. Okay, so we're back. So it's been about an hour, and uh, I let the, the film dry, the black and white film dry in the basement. So after that, I cut it up into, I think, five image strips. That's the, the archival sleeves that I use to put the, the film in once I'm done scanning it to hold five images. So I cut it up into five image pieces, basically, or strips. And I've loaded them into the film scan holder, the 35 millimeter holder. It holds two strips of, it actually holds two strips of, I think, six or seven images. But like I said, I cut, up, cut them up into five. Um, so the next step is, I'm going to do this quickly. Now, I know that the first video really went through it in a little more in depth than I was I think I was doing a 135, or sorry, 120 film color. So I'm going to touch on it briefly here just because it's black and white and, and what I would do in, um, in view scan. So let's, uh, let's select an image here, whatever. What is this? Okay, this is, uh, this is when I was just messing around with flash a little bit on my old Pentax uh, Spotmatic camera. So here we go. We'll just frame this up. We'll scan this in. So the settings are similar, but obviously they're going to be a little bit different than color. Um, I'm still going to scan it out at 4800 DPI, but I'm going to use 16-bit grayscale. Um, 
we're going to call it as a black and white negative, obviously, instead of a color negative. Um, other than that, most of it's the same. I still leave all the filtering off. Now, if you have really bad film for whatever reason, and, and I have quite a few of those sometimes, actually, you can probably see some here. Um, you can turn on this infrared cleaning and it can help a little bit, but I usually just play with it in Photoshop or in Lightroom afterwards. Um, color, again, we leave all this stuff off. And then the output, I still uh, output it as a... As a as a raw image but in 16-bit grayscale so let's uh i'm gonna hit scan and we'll scan this in to get the full 4800 dpi and we'll go from there so i'll pause the video and we'll come back when it's uh, finished scanning okay so here's the image that we're going to use here so this is my dslr rig um i think it was a pitch black room and like i said earlier i have an old pentax spotmatic camera that i, I put one of my flashes on that I was just kind of messing around with different exposure time so so anyway it's kind of cool um what have you we're gonna export this out now so it's the same process before I'm gonna save this raw image out to uh to a folder on my desktop or in my in my on my pc in my computer then we're gonna open up Lightroom and bring it in so Lightroom here will import the image and okay so there it is there so we'll import all right, and just like the color, it's a, it's a negative. So again, same as before, we're gonna open it up in Photoshop. I'm gonna edit the original. And believe it or not, I'm gonna still use the Color Perfect plugin. Um, even though we're not using any color here, it's black and white, it's still gonna, it still does a really good job of uh, turning that negative into a positive image. Uh, there's not a lot of black and white films in here, but we have kind of a black and white start. I guess it recognizes it's a black and white image. Um, and again, I don't do much in here other than maybe just bring down Bring down the clipping highlights um, somewhere kind of in the neighborhood of zero. We can kind of play with that a little bit more in uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. So click OK. And there's our image. Um, here, we'll resize. Now here, it, you know, I didn't, I think I talked about it a little bit in the previous video, but the, the image resizing really kind of comes down to what you want to do with it. Uh, the nice thing about this compared to digital images, digital, digital images, your RAW, if you shoot in RAW or your JPEG, is kind of your master. Um, so, you know, once you kind of start messing around with your original image, you can, and you overwrite it accidentally, you're, you're kind of lost forever. The nice thing with this, with, with shooting film, is you actually have an analog um, negative that you're going to store, you're going to have in a file somewhere. So you, so no matter what you do with this digital, you're never really losing the original image. You can always rescan it again if you have to. So depending on what you want to do with these images, here, this image, for example, and maybe I'll put it up on a website or I'll post it somewhere, who knows, but I'm probably not going to print it. So the size that you export it out or you save it as really kind of depends on what you want to do with it. Because I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not going to probably print this. You know, maybe I only save it out at 1500, and I get a, you know, a six megabyte. It's still plenty big enough to to do whatever I want to do with later, but it's not going to take up a whole lot of space on my computer. So we'll click OK, save this, minimize our Photoshop, and there we have our image in Lightroom. So you can see I didn't, I cropped it kind of a little bit rough, and you can see some of the borders. Sometimes that can look kind of cool because you know it, it looks like an actual. Uh, Looks like a real piece of film so we can go in and start developing this you know do what we would normally do and uh, play with our highlights and our lowlights whatever clarity add a little bit of sharpening a little bit of luminance noise reduction whatever go nuts but you can see grain um, one other quick little thing here you can see we got some spots there from from developing or drawing I didn't use any I didn't use like a photo flow on this sometimes most of the time I do but this time I I didn't bother um, but you can you know simple go in and use your spot removal tool and you know do your do your thing so that's it guys hopefully this was uh, kind of fun and helpful and um, gives you kind of an idea of, of how to develop black and white, or at least one way to develop black and black and white film. So it's not that difficult. It really is pretty easy um, and, and a lot of fun. It makes you think a little bit when you're shooting film a little bit more of, of what you're taking pictures of and how many pictures you're taking. The digital world has kind of allowed us to just, you know, hold the camera up and hit that shutter button and basically just take a thousand pictures, which is cool. It's, it's handy, but, you know, if I get a 24 exposure roll of film, and I'm out walking around, you know, it makes me think a little bit more about what I want to take a picture of because I have I have a, a limited amount of pictures to take. So, and it just, it looks kind of cool. The grain adds something to it. And uh, and again, developing process is a lot of fun too. So it's a blast. Go grab an old camera or maybe you got an old camera from your dad or your granddad or, 
Um, you know, sometimes the older the better, but grab a couple of rolls of film and an old camera and, you know, the chemicals are you know, 20, 25 bucks, 30 bucks. You can get you, can get you the chemicals you need and, and go out and, and shoot some black and white or shoot some color and, and have some fun. Thanks for checking this out. Hopefully it was, uh, like I said, it was enjoyable and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks. See ya. Thank you.